In our daily technologically oriented life, we use computers all the time. However, a really simple question arises all the time, especially for those that are new to technology. How does a computer really work? Well, to answer this question, we have to determine what is a computer. The word computer is derived from the word compute, which means to figure out or calculate. So can a calculator be a computer? In its simplest form, yes. When we use a computer, what are we actually computing? Well, when us humans are presented with a problem, say adding 2 plus 2, what do we do? Well, we know that 2 is just simply 2 ones, so 2 plus 2 is simply 2 ones plus 2 ones, which add up to 4. That, in its essence, is how a computer works. Computers do not follow a simple language like us. Rather, they have their own computer language. A computer follows the binary language. The binary language is a base 2 system in which only the digits that exist are on and off, or 1 and 0. In the past we would have built computers to have 8 lights, in which some of those lights would be on and some of them would be off. We use these 8 lights and convert them into our language. For example, the digit 1 is simply 2 zeros, 2 ones, and 4 more zeros. We can use a computer and give it something in our language, and the computer itself converts it into a language that's readable. So now that we know what a computer is, and how we're able to give it information, we can proceed to talk about the basics of computer hardware. Let's start with the most important part of the computer, the brain. Well, not really. The brain is what we call the central processing unit, or CPU for short. This is the part of the computer that will take all of our written commands, like 2 plus 2, which are converted into computer languages and do the thinking or processing for us. But what happens after the processing has been done? Where does the info go? Or how does it even get from your keyboard into the monitor? Here comes our second most important part of the computer, the motherboard. Think of the motherboard as your arteries and veins. They carry blood, or in this case, electronic signals to different parts of the body. But now arises another problem. Where does the motherboard carry its signals to? Well, our motherboard in the computer carries its signals to things like the RAM, or the random access memory, which is used to store memory that is temporary and will be deleted soon. Another place is the hard drive, which is where the information is stored permanently, like a storage container. If you're feeling lost, let's take a little recap. We have the CPU, or the brain, which processes things given to it, which is then delivered on the motherboard to places like the RAM or the hard drive. But another point comes at our junction. Where is all that information given to the CPU? How can I actually tell the processor to do something and return a value? Well, this comes in the second types of hardware we call the peripherals. Now, peripherals do not do any processing or have any storage and are not necessary to the use of the computer. The peripherals cover the things like the mouse, the printer, or the monitor. In these peripherals there exist two types, input and output. Input peripherals take information from you, the user, and send it through the use of software to the CPU, which then spits out information which travels on your motherboard to the RAM or the HDD. From there, the process information is sent to something like a printer or a monitor, where this information is processed by a smaller processor to output. For example, if you sent over 2 plus 2 in computer language, it would not know what to do, as it speaks another language. So there is a graphics processor in the monitor that converts the language into colors which are arranged as small pixels to give you a display. However, most computers these days have a graphics processor built into the central processor to make one thing do all the processing. The final most common component in all computers is the power supply unit. This is the large box on the back of most computers which takes electricity from the wall and converts it into a usable amount for your parts. This is considered the energy or the food for everything to operate. Believe it or not, if you got along with us this far, you know how a computer works. However, for those of you still concerned, and those of you who want a small recap, here we go. You turn on your computer in the morning. 
The power supply allows the electricity to go each, to each of the components. Your monitor turns on and you type in your password. The computer software then converts those letters into computer binary, which is then sent to the central processing unit. Similarly, the password from the hard drives also goes to the central processing unit where the information is processed to see if the password is valid, and if correct, the computer unlocks. From there, the confirmation you entered, the right password, turns into graphical information and is sent to the monitor where it displays the information in human language. Each and every time you interact with the computer, this whole process has to be done. But all of this is done in a microsecond. When you notice your computer is acting slow, you may have a slow part that bogs down the whole system. Or you may have some sort of virus which is flooding your processor with so many unnecessary tasks that it cannot keep up. Computers come in all shapes and sizes. Some are so small they fit in your pocket. Understanding how the technology we depend on every day is immensely empowering. We hope this video allowed you to understand the basic functions of a computer and tune in for more.